guys! Welcome back. This week I am going to be continuing the series I started last week, and if you remember, uh, I had started on a um, chariot team, a Celtic chariot team from Warlord, which included um, a driver, the chariot, and horses of course, and then Boudicca, the famous warrior queen of the Iceni. And I'm going to be continuing on now this week with the horses in that team and also the chariot itself. And then next week we'll be handling Boudicca. I'll show you what we've got to work on. First, I'm going to be painting this horse figure for you. Uh, I did a horse painting video not too long ago and I showed you how to paint a brown horse. If you're interested in that, check out my tutorial on the Napoleonic Hazar and you can see how to do a brown horse. This horse, however, I'm going to be making black for you because that is a popular color for horses and a little bit tricky. So I'll be showing you how to do that. There's actually two horses pulling the chariot and I'm only going to show you how to paint one and then just do the other one off camera. And then after that, I'm going to be moving on to the chariot itself. See if I can hold that up for you there. That, there's the chariot itself. Um, and this is going to be a good sort of introduction or guide to how you can paint large wooden areas. Um, I mean, we've obviously covered small bits of wood before on weapon handles and the like, but now we're going to be doing a lot of wood. So I'll show you, you know, how you can, when you've got a big surface like that, how you can make it look nice and wooden. So, this is not going to be really, really exciting tutorial this week, but a lot of hopefully good fundamentals for you and you, that you can apply to quite a few other projects, regardless of what you're actually interested in. So, I'm going to just go ahead and get started because there's quite a lot to do on these two things and I don't want to waste too much more time talking. All right, I'm going to start out working on the horse, and we're going to apply a base coat here. And we want a black horse, so it sounds logical you should use a black base coat, but we actually don't want it quite that dark, because I want to be able to apply a wash and darken it down further to get some extra depth in the recesses. So my base coat here is going to consist of a mix of black, um, foundry charcoal gray medium, and just a little bit of the um, foundry deep blue light which I'm going to mix in very, very sparingly just to give our whole horse a little bit of tone. And just exactly like I said, once the base coat is dry, I'm going to go ahead and apply a wash. And this is going to be just um, a Citadel Nuln oil, and I'm going to apply it really generously because I want to get that nice black down in all of the crooks and crannies of this figure. And now I'm going to move on to highlighting the horse. And I'm going to be using very similar colors to the ones that I used in my base coat. So charcoal, gray medium, black, and a little bit of the deep blue light. The only difference is I'm going to put a lot more of the charcoal gray into the mix here than the black. And if you remember from my last horse painting tutorial where I did a brown horse, the trick to making horses look good is they need to have really a subtle looking skin and that means that the color transitions need to be very gradual and instead of using very different colors and having to spend a lot of time blending the easiest thing for you to do is to make more different color gradations than you would normally because it'll save you a lot of blending even though you have to put on more layers it just generally goes faster so this is the first layer that I'm going to start out with on this black horse and then I'm going to start moving on into increasingly light colors as you'll soon see Now the next layer I'm going to apply to the horse is going to be just uh, pure charcoal gray medium with a little bit of that deep blue light mixed in. We want to keep that blue cast to everything because as I've mentioned before, I think black looks much nicer when it's got a slight color and it. it's not just a straight gray. And I like a blue cast to my blacks and grays and that's why I'm using it. It's also going to kind of make this whole figure more unified because I'm using sort of consistently a lot of blues throughout this model so it'll look quite nice when I'm done. And when you're layering this on just apply it to increasingly less areas of the model. We're just going to keep working outwards and uh, you know not worry about the inner legs and places like that anymore at all at this point. We're really going to be putting it really only on the areas where we want light to hit and you shouldn't have to blend too much except on areas like the the rump and thighs and chest and neck because those are large open areas so there you're going to have to be a little bit more careful with how 
you apply the paint. And now for the next highlight level, I'm going to take some of that charcoal gray medium and I'm going to mix some foundry stone medium into it to start lightening it up even further. And of course, that we're also going to be putting that deep blue light in there to keep that consistent blue tone. And once you start to get up to these really light colors, you want to be even more, you know, careful with where you apply it. Just keep putting less on and, you know, you're probably going to have to spend a little bit more time blending, but you'll notice I'm focusing on places like the musculature on his legs and his face and those kind of areas because those are the areas where putting these light colors on is really going to make a difference to giving, you know, your horse more dimensionality and, you know, that sort of extra definition that you probably want on a figure like this. I will be honest with you, I do not like these horse sculpts. They're not very well executed. Actually, one of them was badly cast and was missing an entire foot, which I had to sculpt with green stuff. So these these are not very good. I would not really recommend them. I mean, these, this may be an early model. I don't know. I assume Warler probably has much better horses by now, but these particular ones are really not good. They have badly defined musculature. They're kind of crudely and unevenly sculpted. I think um, mine so far, I would say that uh, generally the best horses I've encountered are Perry horses. They're great to paint because they have such nice definition. Their musculature is really nice on them. They're just really easy to paint and good, good results. These, I'll be honest, they take a, a lot more work and they're just, they're, they're, they're more difficult. They're just getting something to look nice requires a lot more fiddling and a lot more blending and I quite honestly like to be doing. And now I'm just going to further lighten and define some areas of the horse where I want there to be, you know, lots of, you know, really want higher highlights. And what I've done here is just mix more of that stone medium into the color I already had with the charcoal and the blue. So it's just lightening up another degree, basically. And, is, and I'm just getting more and more selective about, you know, where I'm applying this paint. I'm going to make my very final highlight color just be pure uh, foundry stone medium with a little bit of blue mixed in. And this is really only going to be focused very sparingly on, you know, the sort of the edges of muscle bulges and the like and along the edge of the neck and, you know, really where I'm around the face a lot because I want that lighter in the ears, those kind of areas. All the other areas I'm going to just apply very little and just kind of blend it out. But this is really sort of the final level. And by the time you get to a color this light, especially since we want a black horse and not our horse to look too gray, you really, really need to not use too much of this and you need to blend it out quite a bit. And now for a little bit of detail and cleanup work. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of work, first of all, around the horse's um, muzzle and his ears because often on horses, not always, depends on the color on the horse, but you sort of get a sort of a pinkish cast around those areas. So what I'm doing is mixing some wine stained red light into the um, light sort of stone color I already had going. I'm going to be very carefully blending that in around his nose and ears and you know I'm going to apply first a sort of a slightly darker shade and then I'm going to be lightening and adding even more pink as an extra highlight. You should be sparing with this. Don't put too much pink in. You don't want it to be really exaggerated but it's a really nice detail on a horse like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and start darkening up some areas where I might have made a mess when I was painting the flesh but I want to be a darker color and I'm just so I'm just going to be applying straight black then to his hooves. Um, his mane and tail, the insides of his nostrils, and sort of his eyeballs and around his eyes kind of clean up his eyes because they got a little messy. So I'm going to be doing all of that first and foremost. And once I've got his eyes away, well, I'll take a teeny tiny dot of white paint and just put it in the corner because like I said, you don't want to try to really paint the whites of horses' eyes because they'll look scared or mad or something. You really just want a tiny white highlight to leave the, otherwise the entire eye black, basically.
Now I'm going to worry about the mane and tail. They're nice and black now, but I want some highlighting, you know, I want some variety of color in there. And it's annoying as heck on something like this to just paint the individual strands. So I'm going to be doing something I'm going to call wet blending here. So how that works is I've already got a black base. I'm now going to take a charcoal gray medium color and I'm going to apply it very generously onto the top of the part top of the tail, the area where light would be hitting basically. And then I'm immediately going to take some black and apply that to the underside of the tail while the other paint is still wet and really sort of mix where the two come together, really mix them together so that you get sort of a blending effect as the two paints mix right on the model. Uh, this takes a little bit of practice, but once you get good at it, you can get quite fast in it. It's good for dealing with areas like this where you know the transitions are not too critical and you don't need you know real sharp definition so and i'm then also after that i'm going to take the um sort of the, the stone color or sort of the charcoal gray light and i'm going to use that as a high highlight on those areas and i'm going to blend it back into the charcoal gray medium doing kind of the same thing putting all putting it down and immediately putting some more charcoal gray medium down and mixing those two together while they're wet to form a transition. I may even then have to go back in and get with the black and blend it out. So it's a little bit of a fiddly process. But this is a great way to save time with kind of areas like this of hair where you need to get, you know, you need to get a, a, some color variation, but you don't want to fuss with painting separate hairs and where because of how it's sculpted, maybe dry brushing or over brushing doesn't really work. Once I'm finished with that, I'm going to do. I'm going to also paint the hooves very quickly, and I'm going to do that just by using the charcoal gray medium to put some light color around the sort of the base of those hooves and sort of blend it up so that you still have some sort of phase out. So you've got sort of a dark shadow underneath where it sort of uh, connects to the rest of his leg. And then I'll take the um, stone gray and put another light ring around the base there again and blend it upward too so it's even lighter down at the bottom and sort of sort of we get a gradation from that lighter gray up to a black near the top that then takes care of most of the areas that i want to be sort of just a pure gray color and the blending i did on the main and tail is dry now so what i'm going to do is apply a pretty heavy dark wash to those areas because i've got some nice gradation of color on those but all of the sort of all the grooves and sort of the deeply sculpted recess in those areas are, you know, they're not showing up now and that doesn't really look good. Plus the main tail just look too light gray and that's not what we want. So by applying the black wash at this point, we can basically ensure that it looks really, really black. We get the color down and the recess is where we want it, but at the same time, we're still that the wash is transparent, so all of this nice highlighting that we've done on the main tail is really going to show through and you know you're you're still going to get that sort of uh, variation in the color. And now I'm going to move on to the harness since I'm pretty happy with the skin and hair. Um, I'm going to be using a leather paint technique that I often use. So I'm going to be base coating everything here with some um, Vallejo German camouflage uh, black brown and. You know, this is pretty straightforward. You can do this pretty quickly. Once I've got that done, I'm going to start highlighting. I'm going to use first Bay Brown Medium from Foundry to do that. And I'm going to be applying it to the edges. Or well, This is especially true on the large harness. On the thin bridle and straps, you just are applying it carefully. You don't really have to worry about this. But on those wide straps, you want to apply it sort of to the edges and sort of blend inward so you get sort of a darker center to your leather areas. And with this being the first highlight, you can be pretty... Uh, generous with the Bay Brown. Then I'm going to continue that whole process first with um, some Foundry Chestnut Shade and so applying it once again to the edges and blending it inward uh, not so much. Be a little bit more sparing than you were with the Bay Brown and then finally do that one more time but then with the Chestnut Medium and there you want to be very very subtle. You don't want to use too much of that. Just apply it very thinly, very light sort of lines along the edge and maybe carefully blend it inwards and you can put more make it stronger in areas where you want to feel like there's a lot of light like on the tops of his bridle and on those very fine sort of straps that are helping to hold on the sort of the um the, the harness for the um chariot
And the final step really on the horse is going to be paint some metal hardware. He just has a few little buckles on his harness and then he's got his bit that's in his mouth. And I'm going to just base coat those areas with a mix of the German camouflage black brown that I already have out and a little bit of, of Vallejo Air gold. And I want mostly a dark sort of metallic brown here. That's what I'm going for is the base. And then once that's done, you can just very carefully highlight the high areas with just the pure gold color. And that's really it. These are such small areas you really don't need to worry about it beyond that. Uh, I'm not, I didn't show it on camera. Once I was done, I felt like my horse had gotten a little too light gray for my liking, especially compared to the other horse, which I'd already painted. The other horse in the team, that is. It was a little bit darker. So what I did then was I went in with a null oil wash and very selectively sort of washed the horse with some of that black, sort of to darken down areas that I felt were too light. If you're going to do this, do it very carefully. Don't put on too much wash. Really blend it out. Take your time. Do lots of multiple layers so that you don't get blobs or pooling or uneven looking sort of unevenness in it. But it's okay if your horses are a little bit different from each other because in real life, I mean, horses are not going to look exactly the same or have exactly the same colored coat probably. All right, now for the chariot. And I apologize if you can't see what I'm doing very well, but it's hard to hold on to this thing, sort of not block the line of sight. As you see, I don't have it on a base, and that's because it's really much easier to access all the areas that need to be painted. There's a lot of little crannies and holes and different areas that if, if you don't have it off its base like this, it's gonna be really hard to access effectively. So I'm gonna start out by just generously base coating the entire thing using Bay Brown Medium here. Nothing more complicated than that. Just make sure you've got good coverage, get the paint on there, get it everywhere. And then I'm going to apply a really, really heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade all over everything. You just really slop it on here. You want to get it really down in all of the cracks because there's quite a lot on this figure. So yeah, just really, really put a lot of paint on here. The first highlight on my chariot is going to be Bay Brown Light here. Um, and I'm just going to be applying it to all the areas where I want to be more light, uh, be lighter basically. Um, and so this process is pretty straightforward though. It's a little bit laborious. You don't have to do too much blending, but you need to avoid getting the paint down and all of those sort of divides between the different boards and panels. Um, there's some places where you probably don't want to apply it. Like, I'm not going to worry about the inside of the wheels, for example. I mean, I'm going to highlight the, the spokes and the axles and the outside and everything, but not worry about the inside. And inside these sort of little arches, the support arches on the side, I'm not going to worry too much about getting the paint inside those. I may put a little at the bottom and sort of blend upward slightly, but I'm not going to... You know, that's not an area I'm going to focus on here. And the bottom, you really don't have to do very much there. I am going to, with this color and this color only, I'm going to do a little bit of light highlighting or uh, shading on some of the boards on the bottom of the chariot. But after this step, I'm not even going to bother with that. So, you know, just imagine on the model, the bottom of the whole model, you're really not going to see it. You just want it to be dark under there, so you really don't have to put too much effort into highlighting down there. You just, you're mostly going to end up focusing on the top and the outside surface and areas that people are going to see, basically. So, yeah, it's logical. Paint the areas that people are going to see, and don't really worry too much about the rest. Um, this color, you can, you can blend it out a little bit on areas, you know, sort of like, a, for example, the tops of those arches. Maybe you want it to be darker down the sides of the arches, but in general you just want to apply this color pretty evenly to most areas where, you know, you expect light to be hitting. Now the next highlight color I'm going to use here is going to be Spear Chef Medium. And this is a great color in this case because it's quite transparent and it has to be layered on several times to really get up to its full brightness. So this is great because because of that transparency, some of that darker brown we have will show through uh, in areas and that will give it some nice depth. So you, you can apply it, blend it out, still have a lot of the under color show through and then apply it again maybe on areas where you want it to get even lighter. And that's nice because you won't have to spend too much time blending. It'll be easy because of this transparency, basically. And you can see, well, last time I did put some of that, some of that bay brown. I did kind of highlight the bottom or inside the wheels very quickly. I'm not even going to bother here. This is really only going to go on outside surfaces where light is hitting. You can see, for example, I'm painting all the spokes, but really only the fronts. And on the wheel rim, I'm really 
putting a color on stronger and sort of blending downward so it's darker there. And on the axle, I'll kind of highlight the top and not worry about the bottom. So that's how this is going to be with this wood. The, the lighter you get, the less you have to apply, and the more you're just going to blend it out. And then some areas I may apply a very light coat and just kind of blend it out and leave it, whereas in other areas where I want to look quite bright, I will apply it several times to get a higher you know, deeper amount of color. And this is the trick with painting wood. You can really go with all sorts of shades and tones of wood. It doesn't really matter. I'm going through this kind of honey brown effect on my wood, but there's a lot of other potential combinations you could use. But the trick is to get it to look like there's, there's depth of color in there, because wood has grain. And at this scale, painting the grain is kind of silly. It just looks I'm, it doesn't really look believable, but what you can do is make it look like, you know, there's, you just need to make sure there's a variety of color in there, that it's not just too flat, because then it'll look painted. So that's why using transparent colors like this one, where, you know, other colors are going to show through is a really good idea, you know, basically to, you know, sort of capture that kind of appearance. All right, I'm not gonna lie. This is the last step we're gonna do on the wood. It's by far and away the most difficult. And actually, it's probably one of the most difficult things that I've ever shown in any of my videos, at least for me. I struggle with this. Some other people may be much better at it than me. And what I'm doing here is I'm gonna be edge highlighting all of the areas of the wood. And depending on what the object looks like, if it's very straightforward, this may be easier, it may be harder. Uh, but with this shape, obviously it's pretty hard because you've got a lot of edges. And I am using here Foundry Butterfudge Light for my highlights. You want a quite a bit lighter color than the rest of the wood. And this is a real bitch. It has a lot to do with brush control. Um, and the better your brush control, the easier this is going to be. And you also want to make sure your paint is nice and thin. You do not want very thick paint for this. On the other hand, if it's too thin, it'll be water in a run. So it has to be the right proportion. Don't let it get too thick or thin so it flows on nicely. And yeah, it's really just a question of very carefully lining every edge of the model with the paint. And you can see I am making quite a few mistakes here. I'm making a mess. It is hard to get it perfect, especially on certain areas. They're just going to be trickier than others. And so I'm actually having to make constant corrections. So I'll apply the edge high, then I'll go back in with that sort of those earlier colors that I used to highlight the wood and I will clean up in between the lines to get rid of where I made lines too thick or too messy or whatever. So this is just laborious and it's a pure this is pure practice. That there's no trick, there's no technique here. Edge highlights are all about practicing your brush control over and over and over. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it, the better your lines will look, the more even, smooth, fine you name it. I'm still not good at it because I don't paint enough models where this is necessary. Uh, there's certain kinds of models where this is a useful technique like Space Marine Armor is a great example and if you want them to look good you need to be able to do this. It is hard and it takes practice. So I recommend you're gonna do this, start practicing. This is a pretty good place to practice because you've got all kinds of different things you have to worry about. You have lots of different kinds of curved shapes and everything. But what, the only trick that I can offer you here is wherever possible use the side of your brush. So put the paint on the brush and then run the side of the brush along the edge of whatever you're painting and use that instead of the tip. It'll give you better control, it'll give you a more even fluid line than if you try to just paint it on with the tip. It'll just naturally kind of go on the edge. But the problem with that technique is it doesn't work everywhere and under all circumstances. So, you know, this just this is just hard and I, I can't offer better advice than that. However, if you do this, it will really take your model to the next level. It'll really make it pop out. And especially on wood where you've got separate boards, separate pieces, putting this edge highlight on, I think is very, very important. With organic shapes and cloth and stuff, edge highlighting is not so important. But as soon as you've got hard edged models like this, forms, you know, that are, well, inorganic basically. I mean, this is wood, so it's organic, but you get what I mean. Edge highlighting is really an enormously important way to get those items to look, you know, really, really good, to really, you know, I hate to say pop because I say the word all the time, but in this case, it's just, it's just a great technique and you'll get really superb models. If you're willing to put in the time and effort to do this, and I'm not saying it's easy, but, you know, I'd say challenge yourself and, you know, you'll, I think you'll be pleased with 
kind of the ultimate results of doing this. Wow, it was such a relief to get that done. So now I'm gonna move on to painting the side panels on this thing, and I'm gonna be using a French blue to be doing on the French blue triad. Um, I already decided long ago that I wanted some color here and I was going to use blue because as I said browns and blues are going to be kind of the unifying sort of factor throughout this model and all the figures in it so you know that it will bring everything together by doing this. Um, I'm just going to start out basically with French blue shade, apply it all over the panels, then I'm going to take French blue medium and I'm going to sort of apply it to the tops and blend downwards and then French blue light and apply also the top and blend downwards so the almond effect is you're going to have these panels look lighter at the top and much darker towards the bottom and these colors are, don't, are not very dissimilar from each other that makes blending them like this very easy you don't have to work very hard and then once I've gotten the blues on the final step will be a quick edge highlight and I'm going to be using Tomb Blue Shade for that and I'm going to apply it along the top edge of those panels and then along the front edge sort of facing towards the yoke if that makes sense not the back so that it'll look like light is hitting it sort of directionally basically and that's all I'm going to do on these areas and you know it makes such a huge appearance to the overall model doing this because it, it helps clean up where there was what appeared to be kind of sloppiness from sort of leftover from the edge highlight I did in the last step. So basically everything you do from here on out to paint areas that weren't finished but yeah they're gonna make the model look even better. I'm now going to base coat the interior wicker areas on those side panels and I'm just going to be doing this quickly using the boneyard shade color. I'm then going to apply a very heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade to those wicker panels so that it helps darken the recessed areas, especially making sure you get plenty around the edges so that those edges look like they have a nice dark line dividing them from that wooden frame. I'm then going to base coat the wheel rims, which should be sort of iron, I suppose, and I'm going to be taking some, just some black and I'm going to be mixing some Vallejo Air gunmetal into that. Not too much because I want it to mostly be black and not too shiny. We don't want this to look really metallic, just a little bit of sparkle. And you're, I'm just going to paint the wheel rims and then very carefully also around the, the fronts of the wheels where the, sort of the edge wraps kind of over onto, you know, where you, know, where you can see it there. And then I'm going to highlight the dried wicker areas first with boneyard medium and then kind of with boneyard light. I'm going to basically apply the boneyard medium everywhere on the model except maybe those, those edges because I want to keep those dark but the rest put it on pretty heavily. And then with the boneyard light I'm going to sort of apply it to one side and sort of blend it the other direction. So I'm going to put that light boneyard on the side sort of facing toward the yoke and harness and then sort of blend it the other direction. So it looks like basically that those panels are lighter on one side and then sort of a slightly darker on the other side. I'm then going to wash those wickers again this time with Seraphim Sepia which is kind of a yellowish brown color and I'm going to just apply it. Basically I'm going to apply a lot heavier on that slightly darker side and leave it lighter on the lighter side though I'm going to make sure it's still on the whole thing because I want you know to, to, to define all of those sort of sort of different little that weave in the wicker basically that I kind of lost with the highlighting earlier. Then I'm going to lightly highlight the tops of the metal rims by taking charcoal gray medium with some of that gunmetal mixed into it and sort of applying it to the tops and sort of blending it carefully downwards so it looks like lights hitting the top of the wheels. Don't, but don't worry about it. You don't have to do this too much, just a little bit. I'll then take some of that pure um, Vallejo gun metal and I'm going to use it as just a very light sort of edge highlight around those wheels because that's you expect there to be the metal to really be showing through there and I want to just shine a little bit like that's worn. So, But this is not too hard to do because you can really use the side of the brush and kind of go very quickly around the wheels. The final step on the card is to sort of paint these extra elements that are part of the yoke. 
with these sort of under pieces. Now these might have been wood, they might have been leather. I'm not 100% sure what they're supposed to be, but in any case, I do want them to look like they're slightly different from the rest of the material of the cart, just for some variety. So I'm gonna be base coating these with a rawhide shade and then just highlighting them just in a very straightforward, fast manner using rawhide medium and then rawhide light. You know, just put the light colors in the area where light's hitting and don't worry about highlighting underneath. This should only take you a couple of minutes. But I think it's important to do this just because this extra color, you know, it adds a little bit of, you know, variety in the model. And, you know, it just, I think it's a little bit better than if we had painted this whole, the painted these whole areas as well using the same browns from earlier. Okay, and here's our finished chariot model with the horses all hooked up to it. I've just based it. I'm not going to rotate it for you here because it's kind of big and awkward and I just can't turn it in a way that you're going to be able to, you know, see it. So I'll just kind of show you how it looks from both directions. This was, a, I think, this is maybe not the most interesting tutorial, but hopefully I covered some sort of techniques that you find useful. The cart, for example, was not too hard to heart, really, except for the fact that you had to do that edge highlighting, which takes a lot of time and is really annoying, but it's one of those things that's worth practicing and worth learning because it makes these type of objects just look so much better. You get so much better results if you learn to do this. Um, other than that, you know, I think, you know, that this pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, next week we're going to be finishing up the figures in the cart, we're going to be doing Boudicca, and that's going to be hopefully a really interesting tutorial, and I'm really excited to see what this whole thing looks like when it's all done, and I hope you are too. So until then, please, you know, like this video, share it with your friends, leave me your comments with what you thought, uh, subscribe too if you haven't already, because I always really appreciate that, and I guess I will be seeing you next time.